Dr. Kavita Singh, Associate Professor in Department of Civil Engineering in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So today we are going to discuss a topic called as surface water mapping and inventory. So this is the topic which we have already discussed in the previous lecture, but few part we have not yet discussed. So we are going to continue this topic again with the other different contexts. So we'll be discussing about the surface water mapping and inventory. So what is surface water mapping and inventory? First of all, what is surface water? Surface water is water which is present on the earth's surface wherever you see the rain water which is stored on the surface of the uh, earth is called as surface water in the form of rivers or ponds or lakes or sea, oceans that all comes under the surface water. So how to do this mapping and how it is helpful in the uh, planning purpose or any developmental activities, this all activities how we can plan based on the surface water mapping and inventory. So mapping is uh, helpful in the land use and land cover pattern classifications as well as it is helpful, helpful in the uh, planning the city or planning any developmental activities can take this with the help of this mapping inventory. So let us start with this uh, contents which we are going to discuss today. So like introduction, key components, methods and technology, technologies and applications. So in the previous lecture we have just discussed about the introduction part of the surface water mapping and inventory. So today we will be discussing about the key components, methods, technologies and the application part of this uh, surface water mapping and inventory. So let us start with this introduction part. Uh, so if you remember in the previous lectures also we have discussed about this surface water. So what is a surface water? So surface water, if you remember we have discussed like uh, total out of 100% of the water, 100% of the water, only 3.5% uh, of the water is fresh water. Right? Fresh water. Out of that, 97.5% uh, uh, is totally water which is in saline condition. Whereas this 2.5% fresh water, out of this 2.5% fresh water, 50% of the water is the surface water, which we are dealing with the surface water, water which is in the form of rivers, lakes, or uh, ponds, or sea. Okay. So surface water mapping and inventory involve the identifying, documenting, and analyzing the spatial distribution. So surface water mapping will help us to identify the uh, water bodies which are present on the earth surface features so different kinds of water bodies like rivers, lakes or ponds, whichever is present while mapping we can just identify, we can demarcate in the map and we can show as a surface water mapping and later we can help, the, we can use this uh, mapping for the documentation purpose as well as analyzing the spatial distribution. Spatial distribution means it will, uh, in GIS we can just show that how the water is distributed in the different uh, parts of the earth surface and what type of water, the water quality and the presence of uh, minerals which are present in the water and whatever quality of the water that all we can do with the help of the spatial distribution maps. So and characteristics of surface water bodies such as rivers, lakes, floodplains and reservoirs. So characteristics of the surface water bodies, it shows at the rivers, lakes and wetlands. So that's what I was telling you. It so shows in the form of rivers, lakes, wetlands and reservoirs. So this is the process of, is essential for water resource management. This process is very much essential for the water resource management, like in the environmental monitoring planning purposes. So it helps us, uh, this process in the water resource management, it will help us in the environmental monitoring and the planning purpose. So water resource management means not only about the surface water, it is also about the watershed areas and it is also about the groundwater uh, presence in the under the ground. So it helps us in the processing and essential for the management and it helps in the environmental monitoring. So what is environmental monitoring? Environmental monitoring means it will help us to monitor the changes on the earth surface and in the planning purpose also. Now, what are the key components here? If you see the key components here, so we have different key components here like data collection. Uh, we have some more key components like data processing and analysis, and we have mapping techniques. We have inventory creation. So let us start with the first one. That is, first one is about the data collection. So what is data collection? So in most of the time in the previous lectures, we will be discussing about the data data acquisition. How the data is acquired? What is the process of acquisition? Data acquisition. So we have a different process by acquiring the data like the processing process, we have a photogenetic process, 
like uh, through scanning we can just sort out the data so for the surface what will happen in normally we can just use this first of all the first uh, process what we have to do first component is data so first of all we should have the data then only we can just process this mapping purpose so data here if we see we have uh, the source of data we have here is remote sensing so what is remote sensing if you remember we have discussed about many times in the first model second model remote sensing is the uh, source from where we can receive the data without touching any point of contact and through satellites we receive the information the updated information we get through the satellite and we can just go through the satellite data for the operation purpose and any capture if you want to do the photographing or capture of the data of the surface water bodies you can just go through next is the ground surveys what are the ground surveys uh, conducting field surveys using gps and other tools to gather the accurate spatial data on the bodies so uh, conducting the field surveys what are the field surveys we are going to conduct here is uh, gps and other tools gather uh, the accurate spatial data on water bodies so ground surveys we can just go to the uh ground uh, places where the uh, data can be collected and through gps devices we can just collect the spatial and non spatial data and we can just link with this surface walking map now how hydrological data what is hydrological data so collecting data on water levels so collecting the data on the water levels flow rates and other and other hydrological parameters from monitoring the monitoring stations we have to collect the different uh, uh, hydrological data hydrological data it is related to the water body so we can just collect the information like what are the water levels present in the surface water what are the flow rates and what are the hydrological parameters from the monitoring stations that all we can just collect through this hydrological under this hydrological data so the first key component here is so for the uh, surface water mapping and inventory is collection of the data through remote sensing through ground survey through hydrological data now uh, data processing and analysis so first thing uh, we have collected the data now we need to process the data so to process the data for surface water and mapping inventory to process the data first of all we have to go with this image processing so what is image processing so as we have received the satellite image uh, from the satellites we have received topo sheets we have received the received the aerial photographs from the different sources so this data should be processed first this data should be processed the image processing should be done with this data and hunting and analyzing the remote sensing images to identify the water bodies so the techniques which includes here is supervised and unsupervised classification and the spectral analysis so what are the techniques here we use it supervised classification and unsupervised classification for the spectral analysis what is spectral analysis here to find out the spectral information from the supervised data and unsupervised data if your images image clarity is not there if there is a cloud cover if the image is so dull if the image brightness is very dull so to uh, overcome that all the issues we go with this image processing we just try to make the image ready to use make the image ready to read it should be in a readable format which will help us in the identification of the images now gis integration what is gis integration how do we integrate the gis so gis is what geographical information system so this uh, will help us to store the information analyze the information of the spatial data and non spatial data and uh, how do we integrate this all this uh, spatial and non spatial data in this uh, gis environment so we have to collect the information we have to put input this spatial data as well as non spatial data and the gis tool which will help in mapping the extent depth and the volume of the water body so gis will help us to integrate the data to each other so integration is most here so then further what we can see is hydrological modeling under this data processing and analysis hydrological modeling so applying the models to stimulate simulate uh, the behavior of surface water systems and predict the changes under the different scenarios so it will help us to apply the different models and the behaviors of the surface water system and it will help us to predict the changes under the different scenario conditions now mapping techniques if you see mapping techniques what are mapping techniques here so manual uh, digitization so what are the mapping techniques here manual digitization is what what is manual digitization here you remember in the previous lectures we have 
many times discussed about the digitization process. So, what is what is the digitization process? The digitization process is conversion of uh, analog data to analog data to digital data to analog data to digital data. So, what is analog data and what is digital data? Analog data is a data which is in the paper format. So, if you want to convert that paper format to a digital format, that is called as uh, digitization. So, manually tracing the water bodies from maps or images in a GIS environment is called as manual digitization. So, manually we can trace the water bodies from maps and images in the GIS environment. And automatic classification, what is automatic classification? We are using algorithms to automatically classify water bodies from remote sensing. So, automatic classification means we use our programs to automatically we can just classify the water bodies from remote sensing data. So, whatever data we receive from the remote sensing that can be automatically classified into different classes of the water bodies from this uh, remote sensing process. Now, manually tracing the water bodies from the maps and the GIS environment, we can just trace out the water bodies for the digitization process that is called as manual digitization. Tracing out the water bodies, or else we can use the digital uh, digitization process so with the help of this uh, software. GIS yes, software, we can just use the digitization process. We can insert the spatial data. We can see, we can insert the spatial data. What is the spatial data? Like topo sheet. If you insert the topo sheet, that data, if you want to convert to this minor digitization, that can be digitized in the form of shape file. So, what we have to do is this is your topo sheet. For example, if this is the topo sheet, this is the topo sheet. In the topo sheet, you will be having so many water bodies like this. Uh, this water body will be present. So, this water body, if you want to digitize, we can just use the shape file. So, what will be the shape file here? Dot shape file we will be using for creating the polygon. So, we just use the shape file to create the polygon and we just Extract this uh, information from the satellite or the topo sheet data to just make it in a digitization manner. So, this is the mapping techniques here. Now, hydrological network analysis mapping the connectivity and the flow paths of the rivers and streams. So, this is what mapping the connectivity and the flow paths of the streams here means. Suppose this is the main stream here, this is the river. So, this is connected like we have different streams like this. It has a tributaries which will flow and it will go and move to the same channel. So, here we have the tributary again like this. So, what are the networks or connectivity of this? Networks and connectivity of this uh, uh, flow path. So, which path it is flowing, it will show as the um, slope of that area. Okay. So, we can just identify the slope, whether the TV area or slope area, whether it is helpful in the, uh, uh, what do you say? This area is mapped from the top level to the low level. So, the water flow directions we can just check it whether it is flowing in this direction, whether it is flowing in this direction. So, based on this connectivity and the flow paths and the river streams, we can just find out the hydrological network analysis with the help of this surface water mapping and inventory. Now, inventory creation. So, what is inventory creation? Inventory creation is cataloging metadata documentation. So, what is cataloging? So, cataloging is creating a database of surface water body, including attributes like size, depth, water quality, and usage. So, cataloging means first of all, what we have to create is we have to create the shape file. We have to create the shape file, then we have to uh, add the spatial information, spatial information, and then we have to add the non spatial information. Okay, non spatial information. So these all informations, if you add it here and then if you, you try to catalog it, so which will create the database for the surface water body, including the attributes like size, depth, water quality, and usage. Metadata documentation. What is metadata documentation? Recording the metadata about data. So recording the metadata which is about the data. So what is metadata? Which is that is data about the data. Metadata is data about the data. So, we are just recording the metadata about the data sources, collection methods, accuracy, and update frequency. We are trying to just uh, add the information about the documentation. We are trying to add the metadata, which um, sources, collections, methods, accuracy, accuracy, and the update frequency. This documentation we can just use and uh, we can just try to 
uh, into the documentation part of the metadata. Okay, so now methods and technologies. So, what are the different methods and technologies we use it in this surface water mapping and inventory? So, first thing is remote sensing. Again, here uh, we need to talk about this methods and technology. Remote sensing we use multi spectral and hyper, hy hyper spectral imaging systems. So, we are just using the multi spectral and hyper spectral images to capture the images in the multiple wavelengths to differentiate water from other land type. So, capturing images in the multiple wavelengths to differentiate the water from the other land types. So, we just try to capture the images in the multiple wavelengths. So, multi spectral means different uh, spectral images with our different uh, <coughs> spectral uh, um, curves. We use this uh, multi spectral and hyper spectral images to just find out which areas are having the uh, good water quality, good water quality, which area is having uh, dirty water or fresh water or tidal water, that all water we can just identify with the help of this multi spectral and hyper spectral images. We can just identify uh, how much water is present and what is the quality of the water based on the wavelengths and based on the reflectance you can see based on the reflectance what is reflectance here so if you talk about this multispectral it will tell us about the reflectance curve so what is the reflectance curve here reflectance curve is about the uh, reflectance curve is about the information about the how many uh, what is the type of the water which is present on the earth surface that all information it will be giving to you so this is about the multispectral methods we use it, the multispectral images we use it to differentiate the type of the water on the land cover types. And what is the land cover types also it will tell us if the multispectral images where you can see the uh, green color vegetation which is grown on the surface of the water, we can just find out that uh, with the help of the color of the satellite image we can see that there is a lot of nutrients present in the water where uh, the the reason because a lot of vegetation is growing on the surface of the water, that is the problem that is happening on the surface of the water. This is how we can say uh, by seeing this multispectral images. Now, synthetic aperture radar, SAR. So, this is the very useful, uh, uh, what you say, example of this remote sensing technology, which will give us using the radar signals to detect water bodies. So, it will give us the signal. When you use this radar, it will tell you, it will give you the signal wherever the water body is present. Okay, water body is present and specially useful in the cloudy or nighttime conditions. So the benefit of this SAR is it will give you all time, all time capability. So whenever you want to record the images, whenever you want to identify the water bodies present on such areas, the synthetic aperture radar is very much useful. It has a capability. It's an active sensor which will give you the information about all the water bodies present in the even in the night time also. So it's a very good technology when you use the synthetic aperture radar, which will give some information about the nighttime conditions as well as when the all weather conditions also it will give all weather. It gives the information in the all weather conditions. Okay? All weather conditions. So it gives the all weather capability and it will tell you about the water presence or absence in the area, whichever area we are going to identify, whichever area we are going to demark it and about the water body. It will tell us, it will detect us the signals will be detecting the water body, especially in the cloudy and the nighttime conditions. So it has a all weather condition. So this type of radar, this type of sensor is very much helpful in uh, all time weather conditions wherever it is required. Now, coming to the GIS spatial analysis out of this remote sensing technology, methods and technologies, second thing what we have is GIS and spatial analysis. Now, GIS, you already know what is GIS. GIS is, uh, is a uh, setup of hardware and software which will help us to store the data like the data analysis the data and it does it can store an entire number of n number of data it can it has a capacity of storing it has a database where the data will be saved. So now spatial analysis is what we want to do with the help of GS hydrological modeling we do software like that we use that arc hydro or HEC HMS and SWAT for stimulating and analyzing the hydrological process if we want to use this uh, it will help us to, if you input the data of the rainfall and runoff, that will give you the output of that 
information of such area that this area is affected with the ground uh, water problem or not and how much water is present at the surface and whether this area comes under the watershed so with this all information we can just get to know about with the help of this uh, gis and spatial analysis now what is spatial analysis here the techniques like buffer analysis we do watershed delineation we do terrain analysis we do understand the spatial context of water body so understand the spatial context of water body first thing that buffer analysis what is buffer analysis buffer analysis is like it will tell you that if uh, you want to demarcate such area suppose here is a water body if you want to demarcate this area it will give you the buffer of like 5 km to 10 km any kind of buffer if you want it will give you the buffer information it will tell you around that location uh, how much area is covered with this uh, water body so what is shed delineation and terrain analysis to understand the spatial context of the water body now field techniques what are the field techniques here we use gps we use hydrographic survey so what is the gps surveying here using gps devices for the precise location data uh, we can use the uh, gps device to find out the exact location of that such area wherever the water body is present and we can just map that area with the location like latitude and longitude in exact location we can just uh, locate in the map and we can just uh, get to know about the exact location of that particular water body either it is a river or uh, it is a pond or lake or sea or any kind of water body which is present on the earth surface now hydro hydrographic surveying so how about is hydrographic surveying it is a measuring the physical characteristics of water bodies such as depth and flow using the sonar and the other instrument so it will measure the depth uh, with the help of the sonar instrument which will measure measure the depth of the water body like uh, if you go to the Uh, sea or ocean or river if you want to know the depth of that uh, water body it will take the use of uh, sonar and sonar instrument and it will get to know we will get to know about the physical characteristics of the water as well as depth flow using the sonar instrument we can just get to know with the help of this hydrographic surveying so whenever you go with this uh, mapping of this water uh, survey of surface water mapping we can just uh, go through this field techniques to find out the gps location of such area and to find out the depth of the water and flow of the water even the characteristics of the water and the sonar instruments okay now applications now coming to the application part so what are the different applications of this uh, water resource management we talk about the applications of surface water mapping and inventory so once the surface water mapping uh, is done for this uh, part so what we can do here is uh, you can apply in various fields like what you have applications of water resource management flood risk assessment and environmental monitoring so what is water resource management planning and managing the allocation of allocation and use of surface water resources planning and managing the allocation and use of surface water resources we can plan the resource we can manage the resource we can allocate the resource using the surface water resources what what are the surface water resources different resources like river lake pond sea these resources we can just try to manage it and we can just try to find out how much area is covered and uh, about this watershed planning we can do we can just conserve the water based on the requirement of the water body okay you can even do this flood risk assessment uh, like it will help us this uh, surface water mapping will help us in the flood, flood risk assessment mapping flood prone areas developing flood mitigation strategies so to see the uh, surface water map uh, we can just find out the which are the areas for example so this is the map here and the river flows in this manner okay river flows in this manner so whenever the flood occurs so this much area will be this much area will be there is a chance of flooding so this much area there is a chance of flooding so this area can be flooded with water flooding uh, flooded with water with the mitigation strategies we can just do the mitigation strategies also so based on this uh, we can just find out the areas wherever if the flooding may occur and we can just map the flood prone areas for the development flooding mitigation strategies we can just develop the strategies what are the different strategies we can develop like uh, mitigation measures of like where if any area is going to the flood is going to occur we can just find out big safer location and we can just go through the 
map and you can just try to demarcate the area and you can just try for the mitigation purposes so that next time in the coming years there should not be any threat occurrence. Now environmental monitoring. What is environmental monitoring? Tracking changes in the water bodies. It will change, track the changes in the water bodies due to natural events or human activities. So it can help us in the uh, changes, whatever changes will occur in the water bodies, uh, whether the water is flooded, whether the water is dried up. All the changes we can just due to the human activities that changes can be totally monitored in the environmental monitoring. Now urban planning, urban planning is the very uh, helpful, this uh, surface water mapping and inventory is very much helpful in the urban planning. Incorporating the water body data and urban development plans to ensure the sustainable growth. So it will help us to uh, water body data from the uh, urban development plans to ensure the sustainable growth. It will help us in planning purpose for the sustainability when the data is uh, provided, when the uh, all the information is provided properly, it will help and it will ensure you on the sustainable growth. What is sustainable growth? Sustainable growth means using the resources in a such a manner that uh, the growth of the area, the developmental uh, development of the area will be in a normal form. So it will help us in the sustainable planning. Agricultural planning, managing irrigation water supply for the agriculture. It manages the irrigation and the water supply for the agriculture. So managing the irrigation means uh, if you know about the water uh, quantity on the surface, if you know about the presence of the water in such areas, we can just manage the irrigation, how much water is required for the uh, irrigation purpose, how much water supply is required for the agriculture. That all can be used with the help of this agricultural planning. So this is very much uh, helpful in this application part, either urban planning, either agricultural planning, either uh, conservation of the water or conservation of the forest resources, conservation of the resources. This will help us, this is the wide application of this uh, surface water mapping in the country. Now along with this we have few challenges also, what are the challenges you see? So data accuracy and resolution. So if you don't have the data accuracy and resolution, Ensuring the high resolution and uh, accurate data collection will, uh, uh, if it is not having the high resolution and if you don't have the accurate data, it can create a problem in the finding the uh, proper location and it, can, uh, it cannot show you the proper results and we cannot get the exact information about the water present in the such areas. Now, temporal changes uh, like accounting for seasonal and climatic variations in the surface water extent. So we have uh, seasonal climatic variations in the surface water like changes we see, we can see the seasonal changes, we can see the climatic variations in the surface water, seasonal, what is the temporal changes means time to time. So temporal changes for example, uh, today is the condition here, uh, if uh, uh, this map is taken today, first day and now in the like how much time it rotates and comes back and take the second picture again. So this is the second day of taking the same repetitive coverage of the same area as far as the changes we can just get to know with the seasonal climatic variations in the surface water extent. Now integration and diverse data sources. So what are the integration and diverse data sources? Combining the data from different sources and formats. So we can combine the data with the different sources and formats and you can just use the Different social integration of diverse data sources, right? You can just combine the data from the different sources and formats to integrate with this uh, water resource and which will help us in the, you know, identifying the places where we can just identify such water and we can just get to know about that information. Now, accessibility and the cost. So, what is the accessibility and the cost? Ensuring the availability of the data and managing the cost. We can just ensure the availability of the data, of the data, whether it is available or not. And we can just manage the cost with uh, data collection and analysis. We can just use that uh, so based on the data availability. Uh, we can do the collection and analysis part. Surface water mapping and inventory are the critical for understanding and managing the water resource effectively. It helps us to manage the critical and understand the managing the water resource effectively. Like surface water mapping and inventory is a critical and will help us to manage this water resource. Advanced technology and methodologies continue to improve, continue to improve the accuracy and utility of these efforts. It will help us to, whatever technologies we are using, it will help us to improve the methodologies, it will help us to continue to improve the accuracy and utility of these efforts, it will providing us the 
valuable insights for the various applications too. Now, uh, this is about the surface water mapping and inventory about uh, different applications we have, how it is helpful in the urban areas, how it is helpful, helpful in the developmental activities and the conservation of the resources, how it is helpful in finding out the water availability for the irrigation purpose, for the agriculture purpose. This will be all applications for this uh, surface water mapping. And uh, to map the surface water, we need to collect the data first of all. We have to analyze the data. After the data analysis, we have to just process the data and further we can just find out, we can be marking the area uh, through the digitization process and we can just find out the presence of the water body on that particular area on the surface. And later, based on this uh, output of that uh, presence of the water body, based on the digitization process, based on the output of that image, we can just do the analysis part and plan for the urban areas. So, uh, these are the few references which you can just go through to find out more content about this. Like MNG Ruby book, you can just go through to find out the surface water mapping and inventory. And you can just go through these links to find out the more content about this and uh, this book is given for finding out the more information about it. So, that's all for today. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.